In today's video, we're going to be chatting all things Instagram Reels. I'm gonna be sharing my best tips, tools, tricks, and hacks like I always do to help you do digital better. A lot of the questions that I've been receiving lately from my clients have been things like, what are Instagram Reels? How on earth am I meant to edit them? How do you get those crazy transitions to work? And how am I meant to be leveraging them as a small business owner? If you're curious about my answers to any one of those questions, then please do stick around. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. I just passed the 4,000 subscriber mark, which I'm so thrilled about. And I cannot wait to give you guys all that value on a weekly basis. If you're new here, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. My name is Megs and every week I release tech tutorials helping you do digital better. Let's start off with discussing what exactly Instagram Reels are. Now, Instagram Reels are actually quite different from the other forms of video content on Instagram. But you may or may not know that IGTV has actually been done away with completely, which is really marking the end of an era. With Instagram, it's not about long form content like, for example, on YouTube. Reels, although it is video content, it's really that short, snappy content, fleeting messages that have text overlays, typically super catchy audio and often things like lip sync challenges. So it's not a format that we're really that familiar with and it is quite a marked departure from the previous video format contents that have come before. It does appear on the feed but it also appears in a dedicated feed that's just for reels and if I'm to post a reel then I can choose to have it show on my feed or not depending. Obviously you will get better visibility if you allow it to show on your feed and you can also have a beautiful cover image which you can also crop and frame really nicely. So they're making it easy to create this beautiful content but then also have it live really nicely on the grid that of course Instagram is known and loved for. Next up, let's talk about how people can actually go about creating viral videos using Instagram Reels. My first top tip is all about audio. Gone are the days where you think of audio as a after the fact consideration. It really is part and parcel of the Instagram reel itself. The very first thing that I'm gonna advise that you do is every time you see on your reels feed a repeating audio that crops up a number of different times. For example, there's a really popular one at the moment called Paradise on Earth. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Paradise on Earth. Okay, so that might just be ringing a bell for you. So how do you go about finding trending audio on Instagram Reels? Because audio is so central, you don't just want to pick any old song, you really want to pick an audio that's up and coming, that people are starting to use so that you can jump onto that trend. When you hit the central button, which is Reels, which should be a dead giveaway in terms of just how much prioritization Instagram is giving this feature at the moment, you will see on the bottom left hand corner that there is an audio track associated to this Reel. So if I click on that, it's going to give me the opportunity to save this audio. Or if I'm already in the mood to create a reel with the audio, I can simply click that button button and then say use audio, right? So where that's going to appear is it's actually the exact same place if you're outside of Instagram reels and you're just going through your feed, you'll notice beautiful picture over here, just a static post. And if I select that bottom right hand corner, you'll see that it's actually giving me the option to save to a particular collection. If I save to a collection, it'll ask me which folder I want to save it to and audio is going to appear in a very similar way. So it's really going to get saved with all your other bookmarked files. If you then go into your top right hand hamburger menu and you go to saved, you will notice that all the posts that you've saved are there, all the audio posts that you've saved, or if you've created specific collections with specific names, like for example, your industry or niche, you're gonna find it here. And so once you've already spent that time scrolling through Instagram, it's super easy to then just go and find those trending audio files that you've already saved and create a reel that goes along with that. Tip number 
two is about who to follow to get inspiration for these reels ideas. So it's really a good idea to use things like hashtags to find people in your niche and to find people who are creating similar kinds of content to what you want to be creating. But further than that, I will give you two golden pieces of advice in terms of who to follow. And the first person I want you to follow is Adam Mossery. His Instagram handle is simply Mossery and he is literally the head of Instagram. Oftentimes you'll see people post very speculative commentary around Instagram, like the feed is dead. You actually don't want that speculative gossip around Instagram and what it is and what it isn't. I really get frustrated with those sources of news. I'm really going to suggest that Mossery or the head of Instagram is where you take your advice from and it's not about these Instagram gurus telling you what is what. He is really exhaustive in terms of the content that he covers, so I would really suggest following him to understand how is the algorithm changing because as I say there's a lot of influence from platforms like TikTok and so Instagram as we knew and love it is not the same anymore. The second person that I would really suggest that you follow and you can follow her on either account but de definitely Reels Tips is going to be the one, the only, I absolutely love this account. They only recently started it, they already have 136,000 followers and it is run by Taylor Loren. She is a course creator like me and this Reels Tips account is really focused in terms of exactly how you can do different tutorials for different Reels. Right. Tip number three is actually an editing tip. So how exactly are you editing these reels? Well, believe it or not, almost no one is actually using the Instagram inbuilt functionality to create their reels. So all of the influencers that I follow will all mention one app in particular, which is InShot. So InShot does have a free version. However, it does create a watermark. And so you really want to upgrade to the premium version to, so that the watermark falls away. On that exact point, a lot of people do sometimes use TikTok to create a particular short format video and they'll then post it to reels but what happens is because Instagram reels can see that there's a TikTok watermark on it the reach will significantly be reduced. So I'm going to list down below exactly the tool that you can use if you want to do the TikTok method to remove the watermark. It's really important that you do or to save yourself a hassle just have that premium version of InShot and then it's going to allow you to edit a reel very easily. I am going to show you a reel that I recently created using InShot and then I will explain to you exactly how that editing functionality works. Oh, sweet, yeah, I need it from you. Once you've downloaded the InShot app from the App Store or the Play Store, it's available on both, you'll see that the icon is this beautiful orange one. So what you're going to want to do is then go to create new and video and it's going to give you the option to then hit the new button. You can see that I already have 56 drafts on InShot, so tell me you're obsessed without telling me you're obsessed. It really is the best editing app that I've found that is super easy and kind of idiot proof and you don't need fancy editing software like I use for YouTube for example. I edit on DaVinci Resolve. It's nothing like that in terms of complexity. It really does not require any editing experience for it to be straightforward. So you're going to want to import the video that you're looking to edit and you'll see that it appears like a timeline. So you can drag from the left if you for example paused initially before starting your video or if you maybe paused at the very end, you can just go and find the end and use the handle to drag it shorter. So that's pretty straightforward. The other functionality that you'll definitely find useful is the split tool. If for example, I said um or ah, I can simply go and find that point in the video and I can hit the split button and then split again and then select the middle clip and then delete. All right, so the reason that you see those timestamps appearing so prominently in the top right hand corner is that if you're using a timing tutorial, it will have specified as we showed you a little bit earlier, exactly how long something needs to appear on screen. And so then that's really going to co correspond with that figure that's in the top right hand corner. So here you can see just by dragging it 
left or right, I can see just exactly how long that clip is actually going to show for. So the split functionality as well as using the handles on either side is really going to be your best friend. Delete is very self-explanatory, that would just be for removing pauses. The other tools and tricks that are really handy is of course speed. So for example, if you trying to do some kind of time lapse maybe it's you trying to create like a clean tuck or like cleaning tutorial you can actually double the speed all the way up to a hundred times standard will speed it up at the same ratio across the board whereas a curve will make it go a lot more custom like slowly in the beginning and then fast at the end or vice versa and then other things that you can do is crop. Often when I import an image into my Instagram reel and I'm not editing video, the aspect ratio will be slightly off. So then all I'm gonna do is go and find that image, click on it, and then I'll go to 16 by nine, which is the correct ratio. But because this is in the correct ratio, it's not actually giving me that option. All right, one of my favorite features and functionalities on the InShot app is actually just called volume so it's super innocuous sounding but actually it's one of the most handy things that you can do so how you're going to use this is first of all a lot of your clips will have audio so for example it could be me chasing a glass but actually i want courtney kardashian saying i'm just living life so you don't actually want the audio of me chasing in the background you just life. want courtney kardashian terrible life. example so if that were the case you'd literally simply click on that video and you'd hit volume and then you can actually see the volume of the clip so the native volume the native volume of the audio that's associated you can drag it all the way down and you can click the double tick icon which is going to remove all of the audio from all of your clips or if you just wanted to do it to the one little segment you just click the single tick on the right hand side so that's the one way in which you'd use that volume tool the other way that you'd use it is you would use this extract audio function. So this is really, really useful because if you're looking to replicate a reel from somewhere else, you've maybe taken a screen recording of it and you've put your audio all the way up, then what you can do is actually input it into your InShot, have the original video, extract the audio, and then simply move the audio away from the original clip and onto the video that you're actually trying to edit so for example let's just pop that there now i can go and delete the original audio clip that i was actually um just using for the purposes of audio and not for the purposes of visuals all right so volume very very nifty the other thing that you can of course use is text so for example hey there here is some text, very self-explanatory. Again, this is gonna be super handy because a lot of people are watching reels on silent and it probably won't make sense unless it's something very visual. But as a rule of thumb, you really wanna be designing for sound off because as I say, it's often a reality that people are watching reels with the sound off. All right, so in terms of your export settings, the good news is that there's actually not a whole lot you need to change when you export from InShot. You can simply click save. And then you'll see it tells you not to lock the screen or switch to any other app. So simply just wait patiently and it's gonna drop it into your gallery. Then when you go into your Instagram, the way in which you're gonna post your reel is you can simply go to the plus in the top right hand corner, click reel, and then you can select your video from down below and it allows you to preview the video. So that would be perfect if, for example, you were just doing a voiceover and you weren't looking for a specific audio. If, on the other hand, you were looking for a specific audio, you would have found it in your Reels feed or maybe you've bookmarked it somewhere, you'd click on the audio, you'd click use audio, and then you'd go and find that image to make sure that it appears, sorry, that it appears over the actual audio and then you can say add. Then you'd go ahead and say preview. And because you've already added the audio, you don't have to worry about that. If you hadn't added the audio, you could add it here. And you can also do kind of like a mixer between the original audio as well as the camera audio. If you're not looking to import your video, but you're actually just wanting to record it and then post it immediately, you can of course go into Reels and simply hold down on this button and it's going to record you 
in real time. So it doesn't necessarily have to be imported. You could actually create it on the go. But as I say, from the purposes of batching, you're probably going to have it saved from InShot in your gallery and then be importing it. So there's some other functionality which we're not going to focus too much on because we've done all the editing in InShot. If, for example, you want to do a dance challenge, you can actually slow down the video by two times so that you only have to do the the dance at half speed and then speed it up to regular speed to make it look a lot more seamless. So that's what that does. You can also use the layout functionality, which is going to help you to add multiple different videos if that's something that you want. Scale is going to help you to ensure that everything's cropped correctly. And then timer is simply going to give you a countdown so that if, again, you're doing some kind of dance challenge that you have three seconds to maybe move away from your camera or get into position for your dance. But as I say, most of the time, I'm simply adding it from my gallery because I've already saved it. I can also mix and match if I wanted to add a portion here. Some of it could be pre-recorded and some of it can actually come from your native inbuilt functionality as well. All right, so let's talk about posting best practice. If you've now got your videos all set, you can simply click next. This is where you're gonna upload your cover. You can either drag and drop from left to right in order to use a still or there you see, or you can add from camera roll in order to actually overlay an image over and above. Once you've done that, you can click crop profile image and then you can see, for example, you don't want some half cropped piece of text appearing. You would ideally not want anything um, that wasn't perfectly designed for that square format to appear like that. Also shade to feed is a default set as on, but as I say, you can remove it if for whatever reason you don't want that. And then you can also choose to tag people. You can also add a location and then some advanced settings would just be to add a paid partnership label. So here you're gonna write your caption. So tagging people is a little bit different in that you'll see it actually allows you to add people as they appear in the video. So if you had multiple people appearing, you could do just that. And then you're going to post it and probably refresh your Insta a hundred times because you're trying to check how many views you got. But because this is the latest and greatest in functionality, you will notice that you do get a lot more views than posting, for example, to stories or to your feed. So my next top tip is actually saving reels to drafts. So do not be fooled. People are not actually creating reels and then uploading them. Many people are actually saving them to drafts and then leaving them there until such a point as they're ready to post. So what this means is that it's going to help you to batch your content. So when you're in the mood to actually create your reels, you can create 10 without having to upload all 10. I will show you exactly how you actually save to drafts and how they're going to appear afterwards so that when you're trying to access them, it's as easy as posting in one, two, three. A lot of people will say reels is totally not for me. I'm not a dancer and I don't like pointing to the beat. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are some people absolutely killing it on Instagram reels without doing either. So the one lady I absolutely love following is the Levishan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She is a dietitian and she has the most fascinating reels. It is very little of her pointing and more about her explaining that our clients come in, they've had X, Y, and Z health issue, and she's pres prescribed them A, B, and C in terms of dietetics, and then really shares the results with you in a really fun and engaging way. So even though she's not in the niche of being an influencer, she's really speaking about things that are rather scientific, she uses reels in a super fun and creative way to educate her audience. So you really are going to want to create a cover for your Instagram reels. The reason why is in the same way that you wouldn't spend hours and hours creating the perfect YouTube video and then not having a killer thumbnail. You really want to approach the same ethos when it comes to reels. You really do want to be creating covers for business purposes so that people know what that reels is about and really to draw them in. The software that I use to do this is of course Canva. Do I use any other design software? It is super easy to create reels covers and you can type in reels cover 
or cover and you'll be able to find beautiful templates and when you upload that cover you can actually subsequently if you've uploaded a cover go and change it so that means if you realize it's actually not working in your feed and you want to make an update you can go ahead and just switch those out which is one of the functionalities that I love the most because previously all that was happening is I was like oh I don't like how that displays on my feed let me remove it from my feed or delete it entirely and this is going to give you that little bit more flexibility in terms of actually making sure it appears beautifully on your feed. The next question that I do get a lot is whether or not to have your reel appear on your feed or to just have it appear in the reel section. It actually does make quite a big difference in terms of the visibility. You really ideally would want it to appear on your feed so that it's kind of living with the rest of your content and it is going to encourage people on every account to listen and watch your reel. But if for whatever reason you don't want it to appear on your feed, that is totally possible. that I do love about Reels is the fact that it doesn't all have to be video content. It can be a combination of video and photo, or it can also be a series of really quick photos. So if, for example, you've done a brand shoot, why not think of creating a behind the scenes Reel that shows in very quick succession what exactly happened on that shoot and some of the videos that people can look forward to. Because it spins by so quickly, it's lovely because then even when you do end up using that image on your feed, people aren't exactly going to remember that they've already seen it but it is a good way to use the content on multiple different kind of functionalities on Insta. that you're really going to want to do when you take a real live is to share it to your stories. So of course all of the functionality is like meddling into one another but this is going to make sure that people do see that there's something new to go and look at and there's some super cute gifts which have kind of um, messaging around new reel, go check out my reel and so forth. So definitely do check those out to make sure that you're driving as much traffic as possible to your reel when you initially launch it. And that brings us to the end of today's Instagram real tutorial. I hope that it was a real helpful. Sorry, I couldn't resist. And I hope that you are subscribed by this point if you're not yet already. I again want to just say thank you so much to everyone who has supported my channel. It honestly means the world to me that I get to do exactly what I love. And YouTube is a very big part of that. Please feel free to reach out in the comments. Leave me any queries you may have down below. I would absolutely love to help you out and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye!